While I've used Blender the most for my video and motion graphics work for Linux Creative, countless clients, and previous employers, I'm always interested in new tools and seeing how they can improve my efficiency. Recently, a community member reached out to me and mentioned an interesting replacement for Adobe After Effects. While Blender is a fantastic choice for 3D animation and working with a virtual camera, it can be a bit overkill for most motion graphics projects. Friction looks like a promising option to fill this gap. At first glance, I was remembering tools that I'd used in the past, such as Synfig. However, upon installing Friction, I was pleased to see a more stable application with a thoughtful user interface where people coming over from After Effects might feel a little bit more comfortable. Let's take a closer look at some of Friction's features so you can get an idea where it might fit into your workflow. I recently created a YouTube short using Friction, so I'll show you a few of my favorite features in that project. But before I get started with that demonstration, I want to show you how you can download and use Friction on your computer. Navigate to friction.graphics in your web browser, click download, then, if you're adventurous like me, click the Linux Universal option under the beta heading. Extract this file somewhere on your computer. I tend to put portable applications in my home slash bin directory, uh, but this is entirely up to you. Run the Friction executable link in this folder and you'll be greeted with Friction's UI. From here, you can create a new scene or open an existing project. I'll open the project from my recent YouTube short and show you a few of the awesome features included in Friction. First, I'd like to demonstrate that moving objects in Friction is similar to Blender if you're familiar. You can use the G key to move an object or layer, the S key to scale, and the R key to rotate. Following the scale or move hotkeys, you can use uh, the X or Y key to constrain to the X or Y axis. Hitting the escape key will discard any mouse transformation and enter will commit transformation. Additionally, Friction supports Inkscape-like alignment tools to align objects to either uh, one another or the scene. This makes centering text and shapes on screen nice and easy. The first aspect I'd like to cover in my project is the rotoscope footage of Linus Torvald speaking. When I expand the layer, you can see that there are two objects listed. One is the footage, and the other is the path I'm using to roto Linus out of the background. And since I'm using the path as a mask, I need to make sure that the object compositing is set to uh, DSTN instead of the default uh, SRC over. It's also essential that your rotoscope path or paths have a fill color. It doesn't matter what color, but the shape needs to be fully opaque. Now take a look at the paths attribute in the path object. This is what I animated to move my path around and match Linus's moves. After you draw a path for rotoscoping, make sure you have this attribute keyframable by clicking the dot next to it. Then it's just a process of animating between frames. What I tend to do is jump uh, five or 10 frames at a time, then go between the frames and touch things up as needed. You'll get a feel for this the more you do it. You can also see each keyframe on the path anchors as red dots. I found Friction's path editing tools to be very nice to use for manual rotoscoping. It's important that after you group your rotoscope path and footage, that you promote the group to a layer. This gives that group layer behavior as if it's a single object, so your path won't exclude other objects below it in the stack. Order does matter. You want to make sure your rotoscope layer is above your footage layer. Let's also take a look at text effects because I think this is an area where friction shines compared to my complex geometry node setups in Blender. Here I have a text object and you can see some little curves on screen since I'm in curve edit mode. Now these curves, uh, they determine my text effects. Uh, this confused me a little bit at first, so I'll show you how it works. The curve is the influence of whatever the text effect is. Um, let's take a look at the object's attributes and expand text effects to see what's going on here. I have two text effects on this object. One I forgot to name, and the other one is called exit for when the text exits the view. The two curves on the screen represent each of these effects. So taking a look at the first effect, you can see the transition of the effect between my keyframes. This target value is uh, set to words, but it can also be set to letters or lines for different visual effects. I'll show that a little bit later. Uh, diminish is the attribute that aligns with the text animation curves shown on the screen. So you wanna make sure the diminish properties dot is red. So you click the little dot, um, similar to the rotoscoping thing. So click the, the dot, make sure it's red. So you're keyframing these curves in your animation. Um, here, I just set a start and end keyframe for the text effect, um, but you can set keyframes in between if you'd like as well, or you know more than two keyframes. Uh, transform is where I am handling all of the effects you see 
When I expand transform, you can see that I've adjusted the opacity to zero to make the text essentially fade in from zero opacity. Additionally, I've used a translation to have the text come from below its final position. If desired, I could also tweak the scale and rotation. Um, and you can also apply any number of raster effects to a text effect. For instance, a blur. This might make the text look as if it's slowly coming into focus. So I mostly reverse this effect to have the text leave the screen, uh, but set the target to letters rather than words and made the letters vanish upwards. These principles were applied to multiple other text objects in this project. Another technique I want to highlight that I used in this project is the use of combined drop shadows to create a colored border for an image with transparency. Here I added two green shadow raster effects with no blur radius, and then added different uh, translation values to appear as thick outline around the image. Now let's take a closer look at the technique I used to animate highlighted text when quoting Linus. Now my quote layer is made up of a text object and a path, but there's a catch. As you can see, there are multiple paths within my path object. This took me a moment to figure out, so I'll show you how I made this single object with multiple separate paths in it. Use the path creation tool to make a single line with two points, then change tools and repeat this process. You'll see that I have two individual objects in my outliner, path two and path three here. Now I can put both of these paths into one path object by clicking path combine with them both selected. Now note that you do not want to use the union option here since it won't retain each individual path as I showed you in my highlighter object. Uh, you could also select multiple paths and hit control K to save some time if you're doing a lot of this. Now you can see each path in a single object. You can select them individually and reorder them. Order does matter for the next step, which is the sub path effect. Uh, for that, I had to make sure my individual paths were in order from top to bottom on screen. So that's worth noting. Let's take a look at the subpath effect from the path base effects on my highlighted object. Here I have keyframed the max length attribute of this effect, which will uh, sequentially color in my paths with the desired stroke, basically achieving the desired highlight effect. I use this effect a few other times in the video to emphasize quotes and narration. Uh, speaking of narration, I should mention that the first file I added to this project by a simple drag and drop from a file browser was my audio narration. Frictional make an audio layer for any imported audio files you add to your project, and it provides a visible range bar for you to see where the audio file starts and stops. It was really handy having the audio there for syncing up the narration with the highlight. Last, I just want to quickly show that you can apply effects to regular video objects. Um, at the end here, I added two stock MP4 video clips. Um, to each of them, I applied some color correction just to match the overall vibe of the project and some film grain just as a matter of preference. It's super easy to add multiple raster effects to any object in Friction, making it fairly useful for even video editing. So I'll be honest, when I started adding a bunch of video files in Friction, it crashed a lot on me and it, this isn't necessarily a problem with friction and it does relate to my own lack of swap space on my machine. I was essentially running out of RAM as friction cached video frames. So if you find that you're experiencing this yourself, go to File, Preferences, Hardware, then adjust the CPU and memory limits. I typically set these to half of my available resources, uh, so I don't have issues with running out of memory like I was having uh, prior. If you're following along with this demonstration, you'll also notice that some of my raster effects uh, in my menu might be missing from yours. These additional effects can be found in a separate repository on the Friction Organization's GitHub. Simply download this repo as a .zip file, then extract it to bin slash config slash shader effects in Friction's portable directory. This will add several experimental effects to Friction that you can use and experiment with on objects and layers in your scene. Taking a closer look at these files, you can see that they're GLSL code with XML definitions for the UI controls in Friction. The glsl.frag file is named the same as the GRE XML file. I wanted to see how easy it would be to take an effect from shadertoy.com, make some minor tweaks, and implement it in Friction. There are thousands of WebGL shaders on this site, so it seemed like a great place to start finding effects to port to Friction. Now, while the debugging process was a bit slow for me, over the course of a few hours and with no prior GLSL experience at all, I was able to adapt a skin smoothing effect for Friction. The shader allows you to find a range of skin color and then add a bilateral filter to the sections that are in that range, effectively smoothing out blotches and blemishes in skin. 
Uh, it's far from perfect, but I was really impressed with what I was able to accomplish in just a few hours. Uh, so this is definitely the power of open source, and I'd love to see more people getting involved creating custom shaders like this. I've put my skin smoothing shader on the resource section of the Linux Creative Forum. If you'd like to download it, use it, or improve it. So is friction a good replacement for After Effects? Uh, you should be able to decide for yourself after watching this video. It's by no means meant to be a clone of After Effects, but it offers a familiar user interface for those looking for alternatives. After Effects users will likely miss advanced tools such as the Roto Brush if they use it heavily. For that, it might be worth looking at the open source Qt Roto project. It would be neat to see automatic rotoscoping included in uh, some of the popular video editors like Caden Live, but I won't hold my breath. I did find rotoscoping and the path tools and friction to be really easy to use, but manual rotoscoping does take some time and patience. Um, so let me know if you'd like me to highlight QD Roto and other useful video utilities in depth in the future. Um, I also like to mention that Friction is a fork of a project called Envy, E-N-V-E. The aim of the Friction project is to focus a bit more on SVG animation for web, and it leaves behind the Lib My Paint features that were included in Envy. And while this does make sense, I think it would be nice to have at the very least a variable stroke width option. I also think that brushes and textures can add some unique effects to motion graphics, so it's a little bit of a bummer that the brushes aren't included. Um, for the sake of keeping this video short and focused on what I tried, I didn't talk about expressions, um, scenes, and frame remapping, or the SVG export options. These are major features of the software that deserve a highlight, but I figured I would focus on video creation use case first. If you'd like me to talk more about using Friction to create web animations, let me know. I will say that Friction's native SVG and Smile support give it a leg up from After Effects, uh, where you'll need plugins and possibly web libraries to create web animations. So if you're animating for the web, Friction might be a great choice, a great starting point for you. Ultimately, this is an exciting project, and I hope it continues to grow and gain adoption in the Linux community and open source community at large. Let me know what you create in Friction. If you decide to use it for your work, be sure to help contribute to the conversation and documentation on their site. I think both of these areas could benefit from community involvement. Until next time, keep creating, keep learning, and happy hacking.